Now before I remove the apparatus, cam timing apparatus, I want to first break free the center bolt just to take it, take it, loosen it up a bit so that later on it's easier to change the adjustment. Same thing as putting it on 5 millimeter Allen, just slowly walk the Allen screws out alternating between front and rear. The whole time trying to be gentle on the on the indicators and on the contact feet making sure you don't get them caught. There are small clips on the bottom of these Allen screws that hold them captive on the base plate. Just make sure that they're always in place and they're not loosening up or they haven't come loose. Once the base is free you want to Continue to loosen up the center bolt right here so that you can spin the base plate around and you'll see why that's important on the other side as we go to the 456 side the tool has to be flipped over and because it has to be flipped over we have to spin it around so that the exhaust gauge measures the exhaust cam and the intake cam is measured by the intake gauge. On the 456 side the first thing we want to do is make sure that the cams are roughed in properly. Best reference point is on the number five cam lobes. In fact the, the factory has their plates that give them a rough approximation of how they're supposed to look. It's, ha it's hard to reference the the, the number four because they're they're pointed down when they're properly set up at overlap. Once that's done, we'll, the cams are roughed in. Then we're, what we're going to do now is we're going to mount the the apparatus and uh, start to measure the cams. I've mounted the SR zero nine zero in place, cinched down the Allen Allen screws with the five millimeter Allen wrench, and as you can see, the gauges need to be oriented. 180 degrees out as we flip the gate, flip the tool around. Make sure that the intake indicator is over the intake cam, the exhaust indicator is over the exhaust cam. Red, red shaft with a black indicator, blue shaft with a white indicator. I've mounted the top dead, live top dead in indicator, top dead center indicator in number four. It's not necessary because we've already already set top dead center and it's indicated by our our Digidix. And you don't need to do it again on number four once you've done it on number one. It's nice to have a reference point if you're looking for it, confirmation it only takes it only takes a minute to put the, the tool in place if you want to, but it's not necessary. Now from here we're going to check on the the exhaust cam first. Once again then we'll start with the exhaust cam. I'm going from zero degrees on our Digidix, we're going to watch on the exhaust indicator. We're going to have to now we're going to give a close up of the gauges so that you can see a little bit more the, the dwell and the degreeing here in case it wasn't clear on number one we're going to give a little bit closer up on number four start to turn the engine over starting to look for the dwell on number four exhaust. Pass 360. And here we're coming up now. Pass 
So just about 248 when dwell starts and just about 252 when we come off at dwell. And that's 250 and that's where we need to be. So again, I'll show that one more time. Out at maximum pressure. Back around. A lot of bounce on this engine, on the engine stand, make, make it hard to read, but hopefully you get the idea. Now coming up. Watching for the dwell to start. Should start just... Two forty-eight and comes off just after, so that's just where we need to be. Now we're going to shift over everything to the to the intake cam, get an idea on that one as well. Now all we've done is just move the Digitex display closer to the intake, so that we can compare the two. And I'm going to start rotating it over, looking for the dwell. We're watching the cam come up now. Oops up. Started around 88 and came off at 142. It's consistent. What we're usually looking for, but I'll come around one more time. Just past 142-ish. 